My name is Becky Stratton. I'm Deputy Principal at Itchin College. For me, breaking the bias is all about women and men being able to live free from stereotypes and discrimination in their lives. Being able to form the dreams and ambitions that enable them to pursue what they want to achieve in their work lives, their family lives and their social lives. In my lifetime, expectations and opportunities have changed dramatically for women in the UK, but not for women in all parts of the world. Education is what matters to me. Education for boys and for girls, education for women and for men, that's what will enable us to change the world, to change stereotypes and discrimination for all people around the globe. Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm an English teacher here. Um, I'm 33 years old. I have two degrees. I am a homeowner. I pay taxes. And yet, legally, I am a miss, uh, just like a nine-year-old girl. Um, our language, unfortunately, supports and reflects gender bias towards women. I'm a teacher, and if I was teaching in secondary, I would be Miss Thomas. My male counterpart would be a sir. When I get married, if I get married, I would be a missus. So I change from miss, and then my title is defined by my relationship. And because I'm straight, that would be a relationship to a man. So unfortunately for us, our titles, um, our language that we use, reflect the idea that women are less professional, less capable, and less adult than men. For me, breaking the bias is about not having to hear my nine-year-old son tell me that all women working in hospitals are nurses and all men are doctors. I found that really shocking in this day and age that he didn't realise that there is a difference between a nurse and a doctor beyond the gender. So International Women's Day is about recognising the barriers that fa women face in all walks of life um, and breaking the bias would be allowing them to flourish at all levels of their profession. So in the legal profession, although 49% of lawyers are women, when you get to the highest levels in the law firms, the partners, in the biggest firms, only 29% of the partners are women. Hi, I'm Deborah Whittingham. I read chemistry at the University of Warwick, um, and I'm a member of the Royal Society of Chemistry. I'm very proud to be a member of the Royal, Royal Society of Chemistry, um, and I teach chemistry here at Itchen, funnily enough. Um, we, we do get quite a number of girls do the course, but a lot of the time they want to read medicine and dentistry, nothing wrong with that at all. What I would say is that the chemical sciences open up a huge array of, um, of career paths. And what I've always found is that chemistry has never stopped me doing anything in my life. It's opened so many doors, nothing's ever slammed in my face, which is fantastic. Um, I've taught students who've gone on to have careers in law, um, patent chemical law, but you know, law nonetheless, um, and who've, who've gone on to, to not use it at all, but it's a fantastically well-regarded qualification, um, and I would hate for anybody to be put off because they don't feel they're good enough, which there tends to be a gender bias, and girls are often the ones that say, oh, I'm not good enough, it's too difficult. You are good enough. The statistics show that you're good enough. Um, girls are way outperforming boys at the moment in in science GCSEs um, come on and study at Frey level it will not close any doors for you it's fantastic Hello, I'm Steph Cook, Head of Faculty for uh, the Sciences IT and Maths which are the STEM subjects and we desperately need more women in STEM I've worked in IT nearly all my life, I've worked within a very male orientated industry and there was huge gender bias. One of the reasons I left, decided to have a family, and now I'm back in teaching, which there's far less gender bias, but not in the subjects I teach. IT, 16% of uh, graduates are female. Sciences, 25% of graduates are female. Maths, Oh, it's around the same. But for the whole STEM subjects, 25% of graduates are female. We need more of you. There is bias in the industry still, but we can get beyond this. A lot of our STEM teachers are women and they are fantastic, but they have experienced bias within the industry. 
So, a happy International Women's Day. Uh, my name's Sadie Garner. I am a teacher of sociology at Chin College, and I'm also a head of teaching as well. So one of the biases I'm really aware of is what we call a maternal wall, which is this uh, notion that if a woman becomes a parent, she is no longer committed to the organisation or committed to the job that she has. So it means that she can often be denied responsibility or considered for promotions if she is a working parent. And kind of the other end of that spectrum is um, women who work full time and who, who are also mothers are often seen as less committed to their children if they're very, very small. But those aren't some of the biases that we have for full time working fathers. If anything, men who work full time and who have children and who work additional hours are seen as really committed to their families. But often that's used against women, that somehow they're not committed to their children. And therefore in society, there's a lot of criticism and a lot of judgment about um, mothers who work full time, but not really. That's really true of, of fathers and dads. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Emma and I'm one of the biology teachers here at Itchin. And I've been teaching biology for around 10 years now, well, general science, not just biology. And uh, I've done a little bit of research before that, before I came into teaching. And I haven't experienced much gender bias in teaching, um, except for one particular time, which I really felt um, was because I was a woman in science rather than uh, one of my male colleagues. And that was when I came back from maternity leave. Um, previous to that, um, I had worked full time in science teaching, um, I had responsibility, I felt that I had opportunities. Um, I took my 12 months of maternity leave and when I came back, uh, I didn't have those opportunities anymore and I had responsibilities taken away from me that weren't returned when I came back from maternity leave. And at that point I questioned it and my line manager who was a male colleague at that time um, made me feel that it was because he felt I wouldn't be able to cope with a young baby and doing responsibilities at the school. And I couldn't believe it and it just made me feel so awful and I thought why should I not have the responsibilities that I had before maternity leave, why did I not have the opportunities that I felt were open to me before I had a baby? And I think uh, I've been in science for quite a long time and it was that particular point that I felt, why should me having a baby affect my career opportunities and the way I felt about my job on a day-to-day -day basis? And I think that's when I really felt that being a woman, actually, it was a bit of a disadvantage at that point in time. So that, that was my experience. And luckily I've left that role now <laughs> and have an amazing job here. So it's all fine. <laughs> Hi, I've been asked to talk about breaking the gender bias and what that actually means to me today. Uh, my name's Shirley Eastwood. I'm a teacher of P and Sport at Itchen Sixth Form College. I'm also the marketing uh, manager, one of the marketing managers at the college. Um, obviously, the key word is equal opportunities, isn't it? And as women, we often find that we maybe don't get those equal opportunities. So I just want to share some of my experiences. I was a, a mum at the age of... Um, mid-twenties, decided I wanted to change my professional career and I actually went to university with two young children. My children were two and a half and six months old when I started a four-year degree. It was a full-time course degree. I was there every day, uh, so I had to put my children uh, into childcare and my mum and my sister supported me. Um, it was tough, it was really tough. And I remember a university lecturer once saying to me, Shirley, what, what are you doing here? You're a mum, you've got two young children. I said, well, I want to change my career and this is the right time for me and it, it's now, it's now or never, so I, I want to do this. Uh, he said, uh, well, what are you going to do when you pass your degree, Shirley? And I said, well, I'm going to be looking for a part-time job because I've got children and I want to be at home with them as well for part of that week. He said, well, that's not going to work. Well, he was wrong. It did work. I made it work. I was like gold dust when I passed my degree, got a part-time job, um, had lots of offers of part-time work, and I've made it work for my whole life and I've never looked back. 
And on top of teaching, enjoying teaching and hopefully helping young people, I've also had opportunities of going into marketing, which don't tell anybody, I don't know anything about. But apparently my personality saw me fit and I go into schools and I market the college and I love doing it. So, yeah, I've done all right. And I actually think that as young ladies, as young women, we have to push and strive to do whatever we want to do um, and don't be held back. And yeah, you can have a family and yes, you can work part time and yes, you can do the job. So look for those extra responsibilities, look for those leadership roles and do whatever you want to do and have family too, because you can. Thank you. Bye bye. So one of the other things that we generally note that women sometimes face is that there's kind of two ends of the spectrum. Some people can be quite assertive and quite vision driven. But often if women are like that, they're sometimes seen as very aggressive and not considered to be really good team players. And then the other end of the spectrum is that women are often seen as too meek, that they aren't assertive, they don't make strong decisions or they don't make a decision quickly. And it can be very difficult if you're kind of pushed into those two areas. Sometimes things based around breaking the bias have been about what more women can do. So, you know, you can speak up more, you can raise your hand more, you can question more, you should be assertive, rather than perhaps getting people to consider the unconscious biases that exist. So I'd really kind of suggest that we should be looking towards being more aware rather than getting women to, you know, seek out more education, more things that they can do really. One of the um, areas that we know we've looked at different studies is based around CVs. So we know that male and female applicants who apply for jobs who've got the same level of qualifications and experience, we know overwhelmingly that male CVs are favoured. So one of the suggestions that's come through is based around not including names on CVs or job applications or not having people's gender. Now that's suggested to really help women, but also groups of colour. Um, to just help combat that initial um, unconscious bias, potentially. And I think for me, what's really important is to be aware of those unconscious biases, which are always learned. So I'm a sociologist, we learn kind of unconscious biases and being aware that we learn them, but also where possible trying to challenge them. So if we're aware that perhaps a woman's being criticised for the hours she's working, I suppose they just get us to consider whether we would do the same for a male colleague. Um, or just being aware of some of the dialogue and language is used and to trying to kind of perhaps address it where we can regardless of our gender. Um, I'm Amy, I'm 23 and I work in the marketing department here at Itchen. Um, breaking the bias means to me that we don't need to assign genders to different roles or hobbies or activities. Um, I remember being at school and when I did resistant materials or wood tech if you want to call it that, I was the only girl in the class and I was fine with that but when I got the only A star in the class, I was told that the only reason I did that or got that grade is because I was the only girl and that I needed help or anything like that. There was no way I could have done it by myself um, because, you know, what it was for boys. So I think, yeah, I don't understand in this day and age why we need to assign genders to roles. So for me, breaking the bias would just be that no matter your gender, you can do whatever you wish and no stereotypes and diversity, equality for all. There are lots of issues I could talk about, but my biggest bias bugbear is the fact that um, you, as a woman, are often judged on your ability or your, in your intelligence or whatever else it might be, just by one glance, by men and other women, actually. Um, I think it's a really good thing that the media and advertising and film, all sorts of different media, is starting to challenge stereotypes for both men and women, so hopefully things can get better. As a sports fan, I'm glad to see that sports are breaking the bias. I enjoy watching women's rugby league and I enjoy watching cricket played by women as well. As a language student, I'm delighted to find that now the MCC have decreed that we don't talk about batsmen, but all people are batters and the bias in language is being broken. However, sadly still, in Australia, there is the Women's National Rugby League and the National Rugby League. I look forward to the day when it's the Men's National Rugby League and the Women's National Rugby League. Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm a teacher here at Itchen College. 
When I was growing up, the only things that people were talking about for careers for women were either teaching, nursing, secretary, or even hairdressing. We didn't have the options that people have nowadays, or if they were, they were hard to get into. I spent 10 years of my career working in the gas and oil industry, completely dominated by males and often the only female on site or in a meeting room. Sometimes people would think I was going to be the one that's going to be making the coffee or taking the notes. Today, you can make those changes. You can make a difference. Go outside and do the best you can for your career and enjoy it. That's what breaking the bias is all about. Going out there and breaking down those barriers. And you can do that yourselves. So go out and make the changes. Make it happen. If you'd like to find out more about feminism, why not come to the Itching College Feminism Group? This is every Thursday lunchtime in S26 at half past 12. You can bring your lunch. See you there.